The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents The High Boarded Fence, starring Ward Bond and Mary Eleanor Donahue. Lon McAllister is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. They say that spring is the time when people fall in love. The poets write about it, songsters sing about it, and everybody talks about it, so it must be true. And you hear a lot about spring house cleaning, too. You know, spring is a wonderful time because there's a renewal and reawakening of so many things around us. And a wonderful thing in a home is a renewal and reawakening of love of God. Yes, and the expression of that love in the daily practice of family prayer awakens a new harmony and peace and happiness in a home. Family prayer means all the beautiful things that home is meant to have. Family prayer means springtime all the time in our homes. Lon McAllister returns following tonight's family theater story, The High Boarded Fence, starring Ward Bond and Mary Eleanor Donahue. At the edge of the Elmsford River, a high boarded fence forms a barrier against the town. A watchman stands guard at the narrow gate. Above him is a sign with a single word, danger. Okay, fellas. Okay. Hey, you guys, let's go. It passes. Passes. Mike Newton, 379. Newton, 379, okay. Andy Brown, 424. Brown, 424, okay. Hey, Mike! Yeah? What's this, a super secret jam? They gotta board it up like we're building an A-bomb. <laughs> no, Elmsford's a high-class town. What's that got to do with it? You remember digging the Holland Tunnel in New York? Yeah. Well, didn't they board that up, too? High-class people might get scared of sand hogs. Uh, what are you trying to do, kid me? <laughs> I once saw where they had holes in a fence around a job so people could peek through. Hey, that's a good idea. I think I'll bore me a few peepholes and charge a quarter of luck. <laughs> Even with inflation, nobody will pay a quarter to look at you. No, something, Mike. That's what I need. A good racket where I won't be stuck down a tunnel trying to blast my way into a river. Then I'd relax and grab the super chief to California. Relax. <laughs> I hope they take about 50 years to finish this job. What, are you looking for trouble? I thought you were going to get out of San Hog and retire before the bends get you. Someday, soon. And this is the kind of a town where I'd like to settle down. It's got class. Yeah, but I mean... Hey, what are they trying to do? Take it easy out there, will ya? They must have jumped the pressure up 20 pounds in three seconds. Got some soft spots in the tunnel. I think they're going to use about 50-pound pressure. <laughs> you should be used to that, Andy. Nobody ever gets used to high air. You know, yesterday I heard about Matt Sorgan. Remember him? Yeah. He was sitting in one of these airlocks on a job down in Colorado. Some dope jumped the pressure up to 45 before he was... Andy, you always begin the day with some kind of a sad story. It was a sad story for Matt. He's still in the hospital, paralyzed with a bend. Well, that's the chance you take. That's why they pay you 25 bucks an hour. It's not worth it. Well, it's worth it to me. I've been saving, waiting till I could get to a town like this. It's going to mean everything I ever wanted for Peggy Ann. You're lucky to have a kid like that. Don't I know it. Okay, you can get into the hoist now. 
Pressure, 39 pounds. Depth, 790. Pretty hot down there. Watch it. Mold. Digging down a red hot heat. That's us. But there'll be a blow today. <laughs> That's what you always say. For once, Andy, why don't you try to be cheerful? Every time I get down, my heart's in my mouth. Waiting to see the wall shake like jelly and split. You only been in one blow. I still wake up nice yellow, my head off, going through it over again. It's like a hurricane. And I'm in the middle waiting to get sucked in by the river. By right I shall be dead. Me too, maybe. Say, when you see the house I bought. What? You bought a house and we've only been here a week? Job's good for two years, ain't it? Okay, 379-424. No way! It's white. Two stories and a porch in front. Big hedges all around. The kid's nuts about it. About 13 now, ain't he? He's 12, her last birthday. Here's a cute trick. I only wish Helen were here to see her now. Mighty hard, Andy. Losing Helen three years ago. Yeah, yeah. Kind of tough raising a kid without a mother. Sure has been tough. Them construction camps are rough going. No decent schooling, living in barracks. Now, she's going to be a little lady. She's going to have just as good as anybody. You're really going after it serious. This is what I've been saving for. We're going to live different, better, like everybody else does in Elmsford. Now, as I was saying, the Elmsford Tunnel is a miracle of engineering, and all of us have a great opportunity to learn about it. I'd like Peggy Ann Newton to explain what she knows about it. Her father works in the tunnel. Peggy Ann. Well, Dad is a sand hog. <laughs> Peggy Ann's father is a skilled workman. He... he's a, uh, an engineer, isn't he, Peggy Ann? No, he's a sand hog. <laughs> Please, children. And what is a sand hog, Peggy Ann? Well, Dad goes down into the tunnel, and it's huge and made like a funnel. He's Sally. She sure is a lot of fun. Look at the getup she's wearing. I wouldn't be seen dead in it. Quiet, please. Go on, Peggy Ann. They go down into the tunnel that is sunk under a bed of the river, and they dynamite and dig, fighting inch by inch in terrific heat. And uh, they wear helmets and hip boots like pirates. Cheap. Boy, that's something. She's a show -off. Class, please, no whispering. That's very interesting, Peggy Ann. Well, there's a section of the river they have to fight against, and the rocks. It's all mud and sand, so that's why they're called sand hawks. They can only work for a short time because of the terrific heat and pressure. There aren't many men who can take the air. <laughs> <laughs> take the air? The high air is 30. Or 40 or 50 pounds. Oh, yes. I see. That's a severe strain on breathing. Yes. And if they come out into ordinary air too quick, they get the bends. What's the bends? Joseph Rankin, please don't interrupt. Excuse me, Miss Arnold. I was only interested. When you get the bends, my dad says it's like swallowing a ball of fire. And maybe you'll never be able to walk again. Gosh. That was very interesting, Peggy Ann. Well, that's the dismissal bell. I'm sure we'll have many very interesting discussions about building tunnels. Class is dismissed. <laughs> You sure picked yourself the classiest neighborhood in town. I thought you'd like to see it, Andy. When it comes to my kid, nothing's too good. I almost feel like I want to get dressed up hello, to come Mr. Newton. Oh, hello, Joey. Are you going to play ball on your foot lawn today, Mr. Newton? Sure, you get the gang. I brought my friend Andy along. Hey, just I've to... done enough work for one day. You want to play ball with the kids, don't you, Andy? Why? Good, good. This is our pitcher, Joey Rankin, Andy. He's going to make a great ball player someday. How do you do, Mr. Uh, Mr. Brown. Brown's the name. Mr. Brown, I'll go and round up the game. Sure, we'll be ready, Joey. How do you like that? Mr. Brown. 
<laughs> it's high class, but they're a bunch of regular kids. Why, well, I've had more fun. Hey, wait till I show you what I got in the backyard. I've been building it with the kids. Well, here's the house. This place? <laughs> How do you like it? It's a regular palace. Well, not quite, but it's everything I was hoping for. Hey, that lawn looks like something you'd seen in a park. I got a guy that takes care of it, too. He does a lot of other places on the street. Come on. Peggy Ann? Peggy Ann? That's funny. Kid's usually right here at the front door waiting for me. You sure got yourself something, Mike. It's for the kid. She's gonna have... Yeah, I just wonder. Wait a minute, Andy. I'll run upstairs and see if she's around. Peggy... What's the matter, sweetheart? You sick? No, Daddy. I'm all right. Well, what are you lying down on the bed for, like you were sick? It's just... What is it, sweetheart? Oh, I guess I'm just tired. Well, I'll get a doctor. There must be Mike! some... You got a gang of your friends on the on your front lawn. I don't need a doctor. Who's downstairs, Dad? Andy and Joey and his pals. We're going to play some ball. That's wonderful, Dad. Can I play? Well, I thought you were sick. No, I'm feeling fine now. Baby, you got me puzzled. I'm taking you down to see a doctor tomorrow. Come on, Dad. Let's get down and have some fun. Hello, Rankin. Oh, uh, good morning, Mr. Newton. Hard work? Clipping that hedge by hand? It's got to be done. Oh, it runs wild. <laughs> I was watching you, and I thought maybe you'd like to try this gadget I bought. Does it easier by electricity. We can plug it in the porch here. Uh, please don't bother. Oh, no bother, no bother. Look, this is how it works. See? <laughs> Shut that thing off. You're cutting it too deep. Oh? Well, try it yourself, Rankin. You can regulate it any way you want to. No, thank you. Well, it's easy once you get the hang of it. Electrical devices make me nervous, Mr. Newton. Yeah? <laughs> well, I guess I'm so used to working with my hands. <laughs> you don't have much chance for that working at a bank, do you? No, there isn't. Excuse me, my wife is waiting for me to help her with a rose. Sure. I I'm kind of disappointed, though. I thought, well, us being neighbors and all, I'd be glad to have you use my clippers any time. Thank you, but uh, I won't be needing it. Uh-huh. Well, goodbye. Oh, incidentally, Mr. Newton. Yeah? My son, Joey. Oh, nice kid. He's been playing in your yard lately, I believe. Well, a bunch of the kids are they are getting me to show them tunnel construction. Very interesting, no doubt. But Joey was very late for dinner last night. Oh, gosh, I didn't mean to Youngsters keep... forget about time. But we would appreciate it, my wife and I, and I think I speak for the other parents in the neighborhood. If you... Why, well, sure, uh, I'll watch that. They're great kids. Yes, we think they're fine children, Mr. Newton. And we want to keep them that way. Oh? We just don't want to have them injured in any way. You understand? Yes. I'll be careful. Mighty careful, Mr. Rankin. Well, just like... Where's the gang today, Joey? Oh, everybody said they couldn't come. They had... Well, they had other things to do. Oh? Your dad coming home soon? Yes, I think so. Gosh, he knows everything. Baseball and... I only wish my father... Hey, there's Sally! Joey? Joey Rankin, there you are. If your father knows you're back here after what happened, there's going to be trouble for you. What happened? Well, our parents have decided... Oh, don't pay any attention to her, Peggy. She's a stuck-up. I am not. And you know what our parents said. They don't want us to become groundhogs. Sand hogs. See, you don't even know what you're talking about. Well, it's all the same. That's why they didn't want Peggy to come to our party tonight. Peggy Ann, where you going? Oh, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone, please. <laughs> I 
I got a surprise for you, Peggy. I bought a car today, a second-hand car. I'm picking it up tomorrow morning. That's nice. What's the matter, sweetheart? You didn't eat any dinner. I'm not hungry tonight, Dad. That reminds me, I was going to take you to see a doctor, but when I saw you playing ball... I'm I... not sick. Dad, do we have to live here long? Here? You mean in this house? Yes, I hate it. Why, sweetheart, this was, was everything I'd hoped for. What's wrong, baby? Didn't you notice anything wrong when you came home today, Dad? Oh, no one was around. Well, yes, but I thought... Well, they're not supposed to be around anymore. All the kids have to keep away from here. And they're having a party tonight. Who told you this? Sally came over here this afternoon, and just because her father's president of a company, they can have a party. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You mean they're having a party for the kids in the neighborhood and they left you out? Oh, it doesn't matter, Dad. I can get along without Where is this party? I'll go down and show them something they didn't expect. Come on, sweetheart. We'll give some give them some fireworks for their party. Please, Dad, please. But it's bad enough the way it is now. Without Without what, baby? Fighting's only going to make it worse. And then Oh, I know why we moved in here and what you're trying to do for me. But it's just not working out, Dad. It's going to be worse if you... Well, maybe you're right, sweetheart. Yes, it's like... Well, I guess we're new here. And it's a different kind of air. It's it's kind of like me going into the tunnel from free air to high air. And what happens if I don't stop a spell in the airlock? You get the bends? Yeah, and they're mighty painful. So you got to be patient and wait. That's us, sweetheart. We got to get used to a new place and let it get used to us. Let up a minute, Andy. You're all in. <laughs> Ain't the digging gets me. <laughs> it's this racket. You ain't built for 50-pound pressure. That is settling torch. Like a fire trap, too. Emergency welding job. It's in a spot. Yep, bad stuff. Yeah, it's full of high oxygen, blaze up like lightning. I better move them bales of hay. What do I plug up with if there's a blow? Bags of cement. Yeah, yeah, that's safe. Tell the foreman. Hey, 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 hey you guys. Hold on that hoist. Okay. I'll carry, Andy. I'll carry. You work the hoist. Sure. Tell the boss we're checking out. Okay, Andy, here we are. You're going to ride in my car and like it. Get in. No, I'm... Get only... in. I'm okay now. And you take a week's layoff like Doc wants you to. Nothing to do. And you ain't going back to no rooming house. Says who? You're coming home with me. See, Andy, this is the perfect life. A good dinner, a good front porch with a swing, and peace and quiet. Yeah, it's sure restful. Don't know what happened to me today. I feel like a million bucks now. Say, any of your gang of kids around today? No, they don't come around much anymore. Yeah, I guess kids lose interest. I see we got neighbors. Over there in the garden. Oh, they're the Rankins. They don't... <laughs> And it took me years. Oh, my poor dainty bears and my beautiful talents. Who did this thing? The boys. And surely not Joey. Joey and his friends. But it's not their fault. You don't make sense, Janet. It's that sand hog. Mutant? What's he got to do with it? They're so crazy about him. He's got them all worked up about this tunnel business. So they wanted to show him they could build a tunnel of their own. Well, we'll have to do something about this, Janet. Come into the house. He's over there. Remember? 
point. I tell you, John, that man is a bad influence. Mike, it looks like you've got some nice, friendly neighbors. Yeah. I've been trying to figure this out. It's like working in a tunnel shaft, Andy. Everything's going along fine. Then a steel rock drill penetrates a cavity of compressed gas, and boom, the whole thing goes off and a lot of people get burned. I don't get it. Well, Andy, I'm trying to practice a little of what Helen used to do a lot of talking about. I'm trying to be kind to the people next door. Doesn't seem to do much good. <laughs> Helen always said it's bound to work in the long run. It always has. That's how she put it. Soft as bad stuff. The doc say you're okay? Sure, sure. Well, take it easy, will you? I don't know what I'm doing. I was in this game when most of these guys were... I hope they finish that welding today. This muck's just like soup. Watch out, those sparks, they're dangerous. The fabric caught fire! Mr. Rankin and I have been waiting here at the hospital. We heard what your father did and... Have you seen him? No, dear. The doctor said we couldn't go in yet. The doctor's an old friend of mine. He said your father's going to be all right. Miss Newton? There's the nurse. She's calling you, Peggy. We'll wait out here. She's a sweet girl. I'm so ashamed of myself. You have reason to be, Janet. Worrying about a man like that influencing our boy. Well, you were just as bad. I know, I know. Turns out the kids understood him better than we did. I'll make up for it with Peggy Ann. Don't start patronizing, Janet. It's just as... Oh, Peggy. I'm... I'm so sorry, dear. Is he hurt badly? My dad's tough. His hands are burned and he had the bends. But he'll be all right in a few weeks. Dad's only worried about Andy. It's going to be quite a while before Andy's well again. Is there anything we can do? Well... Dad said he'd like to see her for a minute. Yes. All right, we'll go in. Mr. Newton? Mike's. 
Mike's the name. Eh? Yes, I know. Joey's always talking about what Mike can do. Joey's a good kid, mister. The name is John, Mike. It's... It's just... I, I wondered if you'd kind of look out for Peggy Ann while I'm taking this rest. I'll be up and around in a week or so. And... You said it, you'll be up and around. Elmsford's made you into a town hero. Oh, go on. Sure, they've decided you're the kind of guy who lives the adventures most of us read about. Well, that's a new angle. But if you'll just look out for Peggy, she's kind of... I'll, I'll put an opening in the fence so she can hop back and forth between the two houses. Oh, that's nice going. And say, uh, uh, John, you know that electric clipper? Yes. Well, it's there in my workshop any time you'd like to use it. You know, tonight's play reminded me of going into a store to shop, because today mostly everything is made up in standardized packages. You don't have to make a cake or cook a dinner anymore. You can just add a little water to a box of ingredients and you've got a cake. Or you can open a few cans and you've got a dinner. So we sometimes get to thinking of standardizing everything and everybody. We put people in little packages and we try to measure out things that can't be measured, like charity and kindness and love. And that's what makes for a lot of misunderstanding and unhappiness among neighbors and in homes. Neither can we standardize God and put him in a package for Sunday. We need God in our lives and in our homes every day. That's why daily family prayer is so important in all homes. Daily family prayer means God is there in our homes every day. Daily family prayer means God's daily blessing for the family that prays together stays together. Before saying goodnight, I'd like to thank Ward Bond and Mary Eleanor Donahue for their performances this evening. Our thanks to Mark Carney and Phyllis Parker for writing tonight's play, and to Max Terre for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Virginia Gregg, Jim Nusser, Shepard Strudwick, Bill Bissell, Gloria McMillan, and Gilbert Barnett. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Tom Conway and Natalie Wood in Once on a Golden Afternoon. Your hostess will be Maureen O'Sullivan. This is Lon McAllister saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theatre broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our Family Theatre stars will be Tom Conway and Natalie Wood with Maureen O'Sullivan as hostess. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.